When you go inside, can you ask your dad if he'll switch weekends with me? Hey, when you go inside, can you have your mom call me? And my favorite one is, hey, you need to ask your dad if he'll take you to the tournament next weekend because I really don't want to. Have you ever put your kid in just that weird, awkward moment where they have to go to their other parent and speak on your behalf as the messenger? I think we all have been guilty of it at some point. We think it's small and we think it's innocent, but how's it really weighing on your child? talk about why it is wrong to put your kid as the messenger between you and your ex now that you're divorced. If you find value in today's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave a comment about how your co-parenting is going for your family. And also subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I want you to head over to samanthaboss.com. It is about how to co-parent through the holidays, how to make it angry-free, stress-free argument. We are going to talk about how you have put your kid ever so slightly in between you and your ex as a buffer as a messenger, as a mediator, as a referee. Are any of those true for you and your family? I bet it is on some extent. I bet either one of you is doing it or possibly both. First thing you need to think about, would you be doing this, playing your kid as the mediator and the messenger if you were still married? Now I know you got divorced, so there was probably a communication barrier or issue at some point but would you be actually having your child communicate for you if you were still married? I hope the answer is no, otherwise there's probably bigger problems, but you wouldn't be doing it if you were married. So now that you're divorced, you don't get to use it as a crutch to then have your child play messenger. And I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking, Sam, we fight all the time. Anytime we talk, it's an argument. It's just easier if my child does all the work. That's true. It's easier for you. It's easier for your ex. There's way less confrontation because your, your ex is not going to fight with your child. I totally get that. But what's really happening is you're putting a lot of pressure on your kid. And here's the other thing. Your kid is probably volunteering to do this. Your kid's probably saying, hey, don't worry about it, mom. I'll ask. Hey, don't worry about it, dad. I'll just tell her that, okay? No big deal. I can do that. Because your kid doesn't want you to fight. Your kid doesn't want you to argue. They don't want the stress of that either. So they're willing to do your dirty work to make you feel better. Now, isn't that supposed to be the other way around? Aren't we as parents supposed to be easing the stress and anxiety of our, of our children? Isn't that our job? So why are we putting this added stress onto our kid to show that we're childish and immature and we can't have adult conversation? That's wrong. So we need to stop this behavior. I have had so many clients come to me with this issue that one parent is really using their child as a pawn to get things done, to ask questions. Because for example, the mom is not gonna say no to the kid if they say, hey, can we switch weekends so I can go with dad to a baseball game in Cincinnati? Of course the mom's not gonna say no to the child. She can and she should, but if the child asks, that one parent is typically more prone to say, okay, that's fine if that's really what you wanna do, when that conversation should be coming from the other parent to the parent and skipping over the child. You're gonna learn quickly when you go through this divorce and co-parenting that you never tell your child something unless you are 100% sure it's happening. And if you have not asked yet from the other parent to switch weekends, you never tell your child. That's just a written rule. You just don't do that. You don't get your child excited and hopes up and then have to crush them and say, no, follow, it, it fell through. We're not gonna be doing that because we couldn't switch. Something happened and we couldn't switch. Or you easily pass blame on the other parent and say, no, your mom wouldn't let you go. And then it causes a whole bunch more problems. You wanna make sure that you're not doing things to your child by getting them excited about stuff when you haven't even asked yourself. And you surely don't wanna be putting your kid in that spot. Imagine if the roles were reversed. You would not want your child to come to you and say, well, mom said all you gotta do is switch me weekends and I can do this and this and this. It's gut-wrenching to have to tell your kid no. So make sure you're both adults about this and you talk to each other, not having your child do the conversation. And let's state the obvious. This is co-parenting at its worst. You're using your feelings and your emotions about your ex as a way to co-parent with them by using your child really as the co-parent. So you're having your child do the adult stuff because your feelings and emotions about your ex are bigger than what your decision-making is on what it should be for the adult to take care of the situation. So you're making a poor parenting decision because you have an emotional detachment or anger 
towards your other co-parent. So you have to be ready to take out the feelings and emotions with your co-parent. You have to work through that first so that you can co-parent with them without feelings and emotions to where you're not putting your kid in that spot. Remember, you picked divorce, your kid didn't. So you shouldn't be adding even more stress and burden to their lives just because you want to be childish and immature and not be able to have this adult conversation or interaction with your ex. And don't come at me. I know sometimes it's not both people. Sometimes it's really one direction of one parent really doing this hardcore. But you need to have dialogue about it. You need to rip off the band-aid and have the conversation and just say, hey, look, we're going to have this detailed conversation about what we're doing to our child. Our child should not be the messenger. Our child should not be speaking on our behalf. We need to figure out a better way to communicate. And here are some steps to do that. Email is the best way to communicate. You can write out all the scenario that you need to ask, pose a question, pose a request, uh, give your reasons why. And at the end you say, get back to me within three days, please. Give them a time frame. And when you receive that email, you have time to comprehend, absorb it, think about it, think of all the options, and then respond. Weed out the emotions and the feelings in the email. Versus if you know you have a hostile situation to where communication is really poor, and you walk up to one another and talk, it's probably not gonna end well, and neither one of you are gonna be heard. And that's why you've been putting your child in between and doing all of it for you. So email is usually a good route. Having a phone conversation, it's okay, but sometimes it gets hostile. Text messages, I just don't like. I don't like them. As a divorce coach, I hate text messages because it's so instant. There's no pausing when you're texting your ex. You just instantly go back and forth and it just gets ugly fast. Email, there's a little bit more of a pause, okay? So think about how you wanna tackle this with your co-parent, with your ex. You wanna make sure you have this conversation that we're taking our child out of it. Give examples of how you failed. Give examples of how they failed at doing this wrong and say, hey, from now on, I really prefer it to be through email directly to me and we're not having our child ask questions back and forth. And you're gonna get some resistance because you're divorced, that's gonna happen. But eventually, slowly, if you keep bringing it up, maybe by the week, by the month, and just say, hey, can you, can you ask me that next time instead of having him ask me? Eventually, your ex might catch on and make it easier for your child. If you have found value in today's video, again, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode about co-parenting and divorce tips. But also, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below about how your co-parenting is going. And don't forget to head over to samanthaboss.com to get your free co-parenting holiday tips. It's free, head on over.